G'day, I'm James, and today I'd like to share with you a very classic puzzle about rectangles with whole number side lengths. For example, here's two such rectangles. I've got a 3 by 6 whole number, whole number, and I've also got a 4 by 4 rectangle. Whole number, whole number, happens to be symmetrical, most people call that a square, but there we are, two rectangles with integer side lengths. Now these two particular examples have a remarkable property. Let me work out the area of the top one. The area is going to be 3 units times 6 units, so its area is 3 times 6, which is 18 units squared. And its perimeter, I'll work that out as well, its perimeter will be 3 plus 6 plus 3 plus 6, that's what, 9 plus another 9, 18 units. Now I know the units diff, this is units squared and that's units, but the area and the perimeter of this rectangle have the same numerical value. Whoa! And look at this square. Area would be 4 times 4, 16 units squared, and perimeter would be 4 units plus 4 units plus 4 units plus 4 units, 16 units long. The area and perimeter have the same numerical value again. Wow! So here's the puzzle for you. Find me another example of a rectangle with whole number side lengths whose area and perimeter happen to have the same numerical value. Can you find one? In fact, pause the video because I want to go through the answer to this as today's video and show you a technique that mathematical thinkers, and thinkers engage in all the time when faced with challenges and puzzles like this one. So the thinking for answering this is going to be really cool, but give it a try for yourself first. Pause the video now because I'm about to give away the answer. Okay, let's do it. So let's look at a general rectangle. A units by B units, we're going to assume A and B are whole numbers, and we're trying to find what whole numbers fit this particular rectangle, so its area and its perimeter have the same numerical value. Right, well, the area is going to be this formula. You know, it's going to be its length times breadth, breadth times A times B. Well, let's do a better mark of that one. And then its perimeter is going to be, what's its perimeter going to be? It's going to be A plus B plus another A plus another B, so it's two A's plus two B's. So we're looking for integers, whole numbers a and b, which give a times b the same value as 2a plus 2b. That is, what's the algebra we want? We want to find integers such that a times b is 2a plus 2b. Okay, so can we find any integers that fit that equation? I mean, clearly 3 and 6 fit that equation, and 4 and 4 fit that equation. In fact, you might want to double check that. I know they will because they're the examples we used before. All right, so staring at that, can I find whole numbers a and b that make that equation a true sentence about numbers? Hmm. Well, my first thing is I've definitely got a's and b's. I've got two, two variables involved in this. Let me see if I can just focus on one variable. Let me just say focus on the b's, solve for b, get a formula for them in terms of a, but that might tell me some structure about the numbers we're looking for, those b numbers. So let me do that. So there's a b on that part, there's a b on that part. Let me bring the b's together. So I've got a, b minus two b would have to be just two a's. Okay, there's a common factor of b right there, so let me rewrite this as a minus 2 times b is 2 a's. And now I can really focus on the b all by itself. Let me divide both sides by a minus 2, but I've got to be careful if a is 2, I could be in trouble, so I better check that later on. I'll keep in mind that a equals 2 is a danger one, but for now I can say that b would have to follow this formula. All right, all right. Ooh, ooh, I look at that, I immediately have a panicky feeling. Because this puzzle is about whole numbers, and it looks like b is about to be a fraction. Oh, okay, so that makes my emotions go gulp here. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I know b is meant to be a whole number. I don't want a fraction. In fact, the way this won't be a fraction is if the top line happened to be a perfect multiple of the bottom line. Okay, so I want the top line to be a multiple of the bottom line. The trouble is, the bottom line is complicated. It's a minus two. And the top line is two a's. I mean, I've got a up there, but I'd love to have actually a minus two up there. Oh, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Here's a principle for solving, solving mathematical puzzles and puzzles in life. If there's something in life you want, just make it happen and deal with the consequences. I want this top line to be a multiple of a minus two. Not a multiple of a, but a multiple of a minus two. So I'm going to make that happen. Here it goes. I'll do it in a color that's red because it sounds dangerous. So B would be, instead of being two A's, I'll make it two A minus twos over A minus two. Now the top lines are multiple of the bottom line. Beautiful. Except there are consequences. I can't just change the numerator like that. It's meant to be two A. Right now I've got two A minus two times two, minus four. So I need to compensate for that. There are consequences of me doing that. I better put an add four on the top to make it still a true statement. I think this is now equivalent to what I had there. 
All right, so I didn't get my full wish, but at least I got part of my wish, because I got two A minus twos over A minus twos. So I got the number two plus, oh, uh, there's a little fractional part. There is a fractional part after all. Okay, all right. So that's almost my wish, but that is great. I love that sort of wishful thinking in mathematics. And look at this. I can actually see structure in there right now, because I've got a whole number, plus something's going to be a fraction that looks like, unless that bottom happens to be a multiple of four. Well, I know the factors of four. The factors of four are one, two, and one, two, and four. So that tells me for this to be a whole number, I need a minus two. I've got three possibilities. It could either be one, or a minus two could be the other factor, which is two, or a minus two could be the other factor, which is four. Let's go through those cases. Let's do it. All right, if a minus two is one, that means a better be three, and b would have to be two plus four over one, six. B would have to be six. Oh, three and six, beautiful. That's one of the examples we got. Grand. All right, other case, a minus two is two. Two is a factor of four, so if a minus two is two, that tells me that a is four, and b would be two plus four over two, which is another two, so b would also be four. That's this example, the four by four square. It looks like we've got a third example coming our way because I've got another third factor to explore. Brilliant. A minus two is four. That means A better be six. And then B would be two plus four over four. B would have to be three. We'd have a six by three rectangle. Hmm. The reason I'm hesitating is that example again. Just turn the example 90 degrees and we've got the six by three. It's not really a new example. Ah. So actually, I guess we've just proved that this and this, these two examples up to their rotations, are the only two whole number tri uh, rectangles with the property that area and perimeter have the same numerical value. That's it. What's on the board now are all there are. Wow. Though, you should double check me on something. What if A was two? What breaks down? What doesn't break down? Analyze these equations with A was two. And I actually slipped over something else. Four has another set of factors. We said the factors were one, two, and four, but actually negative one and negative two and negative four are also factors of four. Now I know we're going to negative numbers, but maybe the algebra works out that gives another whole number, positive whole number rectangle in the end. So you should check those factors as well. So check a minus two equals negative one, negative two and negative four, and check the case a equals two, just that dangerous number. But you know what? you'll find this is it. There's only those two rectangles with that property. All right, so I love this puzzle because it demonstrates the power of wishful thinking. If I wanted this top line to be a multiple of the bottom line, just make it happen and deal with the consequences. But those consequences, what we did there was actually helpful. I could see some structure and it worked out for us. You have to love the power of wishful thinking in solving mathematical problems. Grand. So to end off today, let me give you one more puzzle. This focused on rectangles, but actually there's some interesting right triangles with some curious properties as well. For example, I think I've got space here. I'll do it here. I hope you can still see it. If I take the classic 5, 12, 13 right triangles, everything's whole numbers there. The area of this thing, the area would be half the base, so half of 12 is 6 times height, 5, area is 30. What's the perimeter of this thing? Perimeter is 5 plus 12 is 17 plus another 13 is 30. Area is 30 units squared, perimeter is 30 units. This is an integer right triangle with a property that area and perimeter have the same numerical value. Now, I have to know there's another example, different from this, of an integer right triangle with that same property. So I'm gonna leave it off with you, find that other example, and then, Prove to me that they are the only two examples of integer right triangles with area and perimeter having the same numerical value. Whoa, lots of cool algebra. I advise you, engage in some wishful thinking. All right, thanks so much.